Uh, now I take you back to Paris, I believe. He's always jet-setting about to the inventor of the virtual trading technology that's uh, used on many markets today. Uh, he um, also is uh, all over uh, television channels, BBC, RT, Press TV, uh, BBC Radio 5. And uh, he uh, joins us, MaxKaiser.com. Max, you just came back from Greece. Incredible live footage when you were on with us last week with the hundreds of thousands marching. You could hear the chanting through your hotel windows, six floors up. The people, I've seen polls, 98% against the, quote, banker ripoff austerity. Uh, but the uh, gangsters that Goldman Sachs publicly put in in the finance and, and, and prime ministership, they say, we don't care. We're going to kill your economy and turn everything over. Uh, and then as soon as they agreed to that, now we're told the next dominoes are going to fall. And then the next and the next and the next. And it never fixes the problem because it's because the, the, these programs aren't failing, are they, Max? They're designed, uh, Max, uh, to always consolidate more power, correct? Mm, that's, yeah, yeah, that's correct. And in the, in the history of uh, Greece, going back to 2001, uh, it really it's um, a great encapsulation of everything that has happened over the past 10 to 15 years to destroy various economies. I should mention that the, when we were in Athens, you know, we're making this film and we got incredible footage, Alex, stuff that hasn't, we're saving for the film. It should be out in the first two weeks of July. Stacy Herbert, my partner, you know, she was really out on the front line braving the tear gas, getting the footage. We got footage of uh, basically cops dressed up like anarchists, you know, agent provocateurs beating people up. And this is a recurring trend all over Europe, in Spain, in, in um, Greece, are these provocateurs that are basically cops that are beating people up to try to make these otherwise peaceful violent, uh, demonstrations violent. We got great footage. So this film is going to be exciting. But the history of what's happened in Greece, if you go back to 2001, of course, when they entered the Euro, it was uh, at the um, because of the their their, their books were cooked. Uh, due to Goldman Sachs came in and they hid debt that uh, Greece had on their books so they could be part of the euro. And it was at that moment that Greece was set up to fail. And ever since that moment, it's been a tragic story of a country being destroyed by outside bankers. So now you've got a situation where just last year. The country signed what's called the memorandum with what's called the Troika, which is the IMF, uh, ECB, EU, which gives them rights to the assets that are owned by Greece completely outside of what is guaranteed in their constitution. So the IMF has gone completely around the constitution, uh, and they have committed this, and now they've got these lawsuits. You talk to Dr. Uh, Tobras, who's suing uh, Goldman Sachs and the Greek government for doing things like signing the memorandum, and also they sold uh, these credit default swaps back in 2009. Papandrea, the prime minister, sold the uh, credit default swaps that were on the books of the postal, the postal office, postal service, for 1.2 billion to his cronies, and then six months later, they flipped them for 27 billion. Now, if they had that $20 billion right now, they wouldn't be in this hot water. So the Papa Dre was caught red-handed committing an act of fraud. And every single step of the way, Goldman Sachs has been making huge fees. Well, I mean, the, I mean, he was caught getting them into fraudulent debt, buying in the, to the derivatives, and as you say, engaging in financial terrorism. He should be arrested immediately. And those prominent lawyers and members of parliament that you got on the show with us last week, they agreed with that. So, so, so where is all this headed? I mean, not just in Greece, but, but now, uh, and we played a clip earlier from the EU Parliament where they were debating the fact that every time they bail something out, it only gets worse because it's designed to do that. So, so next it's Italy, we're told, ne then Portugal, uh, and, then, and, then, and then into France and into England and into the U.S. I mean, do we just have to give everything to these crooks? Yeah, they're bleeding the country. They're bleeding the country to death. And uh, I also mentioned, you know, when I was there, Steve Forbes was there with the International Chamber of Commerce. And they were already openly discussing carving up the country, selling the lottery, selling the ports, selling the infrastructure, selling the roads to outside bankers. And that was their intention all along. And, in fact, the bankers used the assets of the country as collateral to line up more loans to take over the country. Remember, the IMF itself is bankrupt. The IMF has no money. The IMF
IMF is bankrupt. They had to use the collateral of Greece to line up the loans necessary to take the country over. It's like a leveraged buyout uh, on Wall Street, except now that instead of taking over another company, using their company's assets for the collateral to get the money to buy it, they're using a country's assets to borrow the money to take it over. And every single step of the way, the Wall Street banks have made a profit. So the bonds, here's the interesting thing, and I want you to think about this for a second, because it's a real insight into the psychosis that is driving Wall Street and the global economy. The, the European banks that own Greek bonds, of course, they're going to lose money. But the Wall Street banks who sold insurance on the bonds are going to lose more money. And who's the, one of the biggest losers? Of course, Goldman Sachs. So why would Goldman Sachs sell itself products that they themselves are going to lose billions of dollars on? Because they know that if they need to, they can go to Congress and get another bailout. And this is the psychosis of the Wall Street mentality. They simply rape and pillage, and whenever they get into trouble, they go to Congress and they get another... And they run down. around financing all these fake libertarians that give it a bad name uh, and, and say it's free market when it's big mega banks and, and brokerage firms going and doing deals they know are going to go belly up, making money on the way up, then getting a bailout on the way down, and then telling us we've got to bail them out, it's the free market. The free market would not just be let them lose their, uh, their you-know-whats, but also arrest them for fraud. I mean, I, I mean, if I lie on my taxes, to, to, which is paid to the private Federal Reserve, the income tax, doesn't go to run the country, they will throw me in prison. You know, if I was to lie about $5,000 and they caught me, these crooks have internal emails, as you know, uh, Timberwolf and other things, calling their customers idiot scum and, you know, we're going to sell them the bleeper and ha, ha, ha. I mean, these are just criminals. And, and, I, and I know you worked with these people. Uh, I mean, we need to, fr quite frankly, get a 1776 situation through the courts going and haul them up and, and, and turn loose all the pot smokers out of prison and, and throw these people in jail. I mean, we got room for hundreds of thousands of these brokers that, that have engaged in crimes to slap them in prison. <laughs> well, yeah, they, they are, cr criminality has become America's number one GDP booster. If it wasn't for fraud and financial crimes, America would have no GDP at all. They barely have a GDP now. But it's the, the entire country now is run on Ponzi schemes and frauds. They're, they're, like, for example, the bailout of General Motors, that's turned out to be another huge Ponzi scheme and fraud. Obama points to that as a success story. Well, the, com the company's already failing again. They're, they're stuffing the pipeline with inventory that can't possibly No, you sold. said that a year ago, and it came out earlier in the week, uh, headlines in, in the Wall Street Journal, uh, that there was fraud in the numbers that the White House released. I mean, that's obvious, but... Uh, just digressing for a moment, I want to get your take on the constitutional crisis. Some good things are now happening. I said it could be as early as next week. I have to correct myself. They voted about 30 minutes ago. House votes no on continuing Obama's war in Libya. That's Associated Press. Meanwhile, top Democrat representative, now this is from The Hill, says that Obama has become an absolute monarch. Th that's a quote. Is quote, becoming an absolute monarch. Uh, monarch from Representative Gerald Nadler, uh, the uh, self-propelled uh, German Zeppelin, uh, said uh, Congress must uh, act to limit funding for military operations in Libya to order correct uh, the, the trend. And, and, and the media is reporting this is a total rout for the warmonger-in-chief. What's happening with all these pro-UN globalist lovers suddenly turning against, uh, uh, turning against our Messiah, Lord Obama? because they don't like spending the money, but I don't think they're going to have any success overturning the Obama doctrine because he's got Wall Street in his pocket and he's got the hedge funds in his pocket. They're going to fund his re-election campaign. And in exchange... Hey, hold on. Is that a French police car? Let me hear that. Yeah, it sure is. This is genuine... Huh? The streets of Paris. Are they coming to arrest you? <laughs> Sounds like they're outside your apartment or your house. I think they're coming for donations for their annual Christmas party. <laughs> oh, there they go. Oh, they missed me this time. The, the, the gendars, or what do you call them? Yeah, they're all gone. I chased them away.
Okay, Lord Kaiser. I mean, what do you mean? I mean, a week ago, people wouldn't have believed Congress would stand up to Obama. I mean, I mean, Congress has a nine percent approval rating. The public's waking up. Yeah. I'm seeing a lot of a lot of positive things happen. Well, no, they have this. Uh, they have the ability now to, to to crash the market. You know, two years ago, they used, under Bush, they used the uh, color coded terror alerts. Every time he needed to get something done, he'd say, "Oh my God, it's a red alert! Everyone, jump under the bed!" And by the way, we've got to pass some more legislation. Now, what Obama, with his relationship with Wall Street, uh, when they need to, they crash the market, and everyone gets totally frightened by this. And then and that's admitted. Them. That's admitted. I mean, I mean, the cybersecurity uh, is launching cyber attacks against themselves, like Stuxnet, and then openly using that to try to take over the internet. Right, because it's a fantastic tool to be able to, you know, instill fear in the people, the masses, anytime you want by uh, by a market collapse, and this scares everybody to death. And um, they have this ability now, so I don't think anyone's going to be able to stop Obama because he and the hedge funds have created this kind of neo hedge fund fascism. It's well, why don't you just fascism. roll over then? Hold on, why don't you just go to the local French cemetery and crawl into a grave? Uh, there, Max. I mean, uh, uh, let's not be defeatist. We're, we're starting to identify the banksters thanks to your great work and, and many others and uh, our listeners taking action. And I, and I see us gaining ground every day. What do you mean we're not going to be able to stop this scumbag? Oh, believing right. believing, and you can win is half the battle. Speaking of French cemeteries, there's one not far from where I live where they have all the bodies buried that uh, suffered the decapitation during the reign of terror. And uh, so there's their famous names are buried there. It should be a lesson to all your bankers. If you push the people too far, uh, you know, you're playing with fire. And historically, this is what happens. And I, I see it happening on the ground in Athens, Alex. I see it in Dublin. I see it all across Europe. I see it, we're going to Madrid next. The folks are basically, they don't want to parse through the bureaucracy and try to read the bills anymore. They're just going to get the guillotine out of storage and start lopping heads off and let God figure it out. Because they've had it. They've, they're completely at the end of their tether. There's no more futzing about here. The people are absolutely at the end of the line. They are. They realize the austerity measures are cooked up just to pay banker bonuses. There's no legitimate economic reason for it. It's wholesale robbery. It's a financial rape. And it's all short term because watching even EU debates and reading European papers, they admit this austerity measure will wreck Greece even more, where even long term they won't even be able to be milked anymore. And so they're going to kill the economy short term to, to, to feed their greediness. Well, they're just going to sell the, the assets for pennies on the dollar to these foreign interests. It's a uh, uh, Max, Ma Max, stay there. I want to come back with you. Because uh, you're, you're there in Europe and, and you just left Greece. And they're now saying, oh, Italy's the next to fall. I thought it was going to be Portugal. Now they're saying Italy has got to give everything over to the bankers. We know the Italians aren't going to do that. I mean, I love the Italians, folks. Statistically, they're the biggest tax cheats in the world. They just don't do what the government what tells you said them. has unfolded and come true with great precision. That's why we have you on. But you were an Obama supporter early on. And, you know, some folks thought I was a kook for saying he was going to sell everybody out. I could look at his advisors. But I'm here to tell you, I don't think he's going to win re-election. And I don't think the Republicans that are going to try to neocon and finagle things are going to get away with anything. More and more, the evidence is showing day by day, week by week, that that there is a major awakening across the board right now. So I'm saying, have faith, my friend. Have faith, my friend. Exciting things are happening. Uh, Texas is set to vote today, but I heard a bunch of senators didn't show up uh, during the special session so they can abstain. Our crew's down there right now uh, and going to be reporting on it for us. So, so they can play games to, to stall for a while, but like you said in Europe, you know, with one hand you take it, the other you, you know, give back. Uh, Max, you're, you're saying folks aren't putting up with it anymore in Europe. Yeah, no, you're right. I, I did give Obama the benefit of the doubt, and I thought your film, The Obama Deception, you know, it was the only real piece of filmmaking out there at the time that was going, you know, it's so much in the other direction, and now it's turned out to be absolutely correct. It was a complete con job. It was a complete deception. And, um, you know, it's highly disappointing. But I, I, when people mention, I, mean, I live here in France, I live in Europe, but when people mention President Obama, the first thought that goes through my head is, my God, he's still president? You, you kind of you can't believe that the guy is still in the White House. But I, I think that he will uh, marshal the forces of his hedge fund supporters who pull the strings of the economy, and they will uh, pull some fast tricks when they need to. And I don't think that there's any, you know, and they vilify Ron Paul. I mean, Ron Paul obviously would be a fantastic presidential candidate, but he's constantly marginalized by mainstream media. He's constantly...
constantly uh, not counted on straw polls as a winner, even though he always is the winner. So they're firmly in control. So uh, I don't, I, but I could be wrong again. I mean, I, I was obviously wrong <laughs> during the first election cycle. So uh, could, could be wrong. Well, again. I'm not. I'm not here saying you're wrong. I mean, I understand the, the you know the overall pessimism, and and they are playing every dirty trick in the book on Ron Paul. But Ron Paul, uh, again, is there knowing he's taken one for the team to inject real issues. So we win long term, whether he wins the election or wins the nomination uh, or not. But but sh shifting gears back to the question I brought up before the break, uh, obviously the contagion is spreading. It was always designed to do this. Now we're told it's Italy about to go into receivership, not Portugal. Uh, what's your take on that? I mean, how is this uh, looting uh, financial terrorism? Where will they strike next? My grand theory of all of this, of course, whether you're talking about any of the so-called pigs, Portugal, Ireland, Italy, Greece, or Spain, um, the, the, me, the big tr player in all of this is Germany. You know, Germany has an extraordinary successful economy, huge export market. They've got um, great growth in their employment. And, of course, after World War II, they were split into two parts. When the euro came along, they were allowed to unify, but only in the context of the many-country euro. But now that the euro is splitting up, you see, Alex, the possibility of a reunified Germany that separates from everybody else in Europe is quite real. Now you've got a superpower with their own bank, their own currency, the strongest economy in the world. No, you're right. Merkel Merkel almost lost re-election in the parliamentary because the last bailout was so unpopular. They're not going to get away with another one. Deutschland's going to break, aren't they? I mean, they're going to pull out. Well, as long when the euro's cheap, their exports boom. So it's a game. They they t they talk up the crisis in the in the in the peripheral countries because they want to get the euro cheap. But even even trying to talk the euro down like Germany does to, to help their export business, the, the euro is still very. Stay very there, strong. Kaiser. Let's do five more minutes with you on the other side. Stay and well and talk to Matt in Texas. Matt, you're on the air. Go ahead. Thanks for taking my call, Alex. <clears throat> well. Um, you said you wanted the callers to call in and talk about the economic meltdowns that are happening everywhere and the constant devaluation of our dollar and the euro mm -hmm. declining. And I just, uh, my question is more of a piece of advice you can say. Um, my, uh, I'm only 20 years old and my parents are planning to invest quite a bit of money in me to uh, go to a major university. And I'm starting to tell them about What for? Is it for uh, engineering or something? Because if it's not something technical, in my opinion, it's not going to be worth very much unless you were the absolute top of your class and still it could be a problem. I mean, well, what do you want to do, go to college for? Actually, it's, um, it's for art. Well, not for art. It's uh, the Berkeley College of Music in Boston. Max Kaiser, and, uh, uh, what's your advice to this fellow? Well, he was asking, I think the question was going to be about some kind of investment or something, right? Not about college. Well, no, I think he said they're going to invest money to send me to college. Oh, what is your question, Matt? Well, I was just, um, like I said, it was kind of a piece of advice that I guess you guys can give me because um, seeing that the world is, you know, going the way it is and talks are being had of a major economic depression, I was just wondering, in your honest opinion, if you think it would be in vain, a waste of money to go to a, a you know, a college for arts. Yeah, that um, was the question that. he asked, Max. So back to the question. Uh, yeah. No, I, I would think the best thing to do would be to spend a few years outside of the United States to get a, more of a global picture of what's you know going on and to get some skills in intercultural kind of communication and things of that nature. Yeah, I mean, are you an oil painter or something? Give yourself a weird name, claim that you love the world government, and then you'll get giant government grants to you'll make millions of dollars. Call yourself Wiggly Bagutu or something, and say you hate freedom and the Second Amendment, they'll go, 10 million, 50 million, 100 million. You'll just be rolling in cash. Ah, thank you, Mar. I'm, I'm sorry. Sorry, go ahead. Well, no, I mean, the thing is, uh, let, me, let me follow up. See, in the U.S., they, for the next five, ten years, it's going to be continuously a drip, drip, drip economic collapse. And so that's a total bore. I'd rather go to a country that is already collapsed, like Greece or Iceland, where things have collapsed already, and you can participate in the upswing. So you be, be part of it. Or go to Brazil. You know, Brazil is a, company, is a country that's booming. You know, go somewhere where things are booming. But Ola. sit around the U.S. for five years and listen to everyone complain about how bad things are. It's not a good way to spend your 20s. 
Okay, David, uh, or Matt, I hope that answers you. Oh, my call list is changing. I think that was, who was I just talking to? Oh, Matt by the way, Alex, uh, I wanted to thank your listeners, by the way. Oh. You know, yeah, when are you going to make the pirate the film thing that you advertised, uh, Al Alex, in the uh, rabbit hole? <laughs> the film that we made in Greece, we raised the entire 4500 budget from people who listen to our shows through, you know, giving us 5 and $10 a piece on my site, Pirate My Film. And they've already now, we've already financed half of the next film that we're going to shoot in Spain. So this is called crowdfunding. So the crowd each kicks in a few bucks, and then we go make the film. And then when, when we release it onto YouTube, it's completely without any copyright whatsoever. It's copyright-free media. So we, we release it freely into the media. Anyone can download it. We want people to download it. This is pure copyright-free media that's crowdfunded on Pirate My Film. And we do the films about all these hotspots and all these economic... Very, very exciting, Max. Look forward to talking to you again soon.